Courtesy of JK's World of Golf out there at the airport. Buy a box of balls and go berserk 24-7. He is here, the BTE Live in studio. Now, when I'm off in a couple of weeks, I've got a very special experience to undertake, which is taking is it a free, it is, is it a freebie you've got to New York? Well, it was all part of the employment dispute last year, <laughs> Brendan, so let's call it a freebie, shall we? So uh, you're going on the non-stopper? Uh, no, no, no. We're actually, we're actually uh, landing at, at Dallas-Fort Worth, and we're then we're flying up oh, to okay. Buffalo after that, okay? So I'm taking my sons and my brother over there. Just uh, it's a bros on tour. Uh, okay. Yeah, okay. it'll be a wonderful... Nice. Anyway, yeah. so Brendan has very kindly um, agreed to step in and cover the programme. This isn't for a couple of weeks, people, but the BTE will be live over that period of time. You texted me today, you said... Awful All Blacks, awful Black Caps, awful FIFA, wonderful Lydia. So where do, what are we going to start, with the awful or the wonderful? Let's start with the awful, shall okay. we? Well, OK, let's start with the All Blacks. Um, after a lot of thought and consideration and casting my mind back over the last God knows how many decades, I've come to the conclusion the last nine minutes of that match on Sunday morning was the worst nine minutes of rugby the All Blacks have played since 1999 and against the meltdown, France, the meltdown against France, France in that uh, semi-final down in, in Cardiff. Yeah. Um, and uh, we've seen a few this year, haven't we? I mean, they were up 18 points against Australia. They conceded 23 unanswered points That's against it. Scotland. Yep. Uh, they allowed the Japanese back into that match a few weeks ago in Tokyo and against South Africa. So it's not a physical issue with this all-black side. The big problem, and this is where there is this delightful contrast with the wonderful last weekend with uh, Lydia Ko, it's the mental capacity Mix of this, saying this, yesterday, of this saying all-black exactly side. Thing, yeah. I mean, I'm still scratching my head and trying to answer this question. Why on earth did TJ Perinara oh. put that crazy oh. kick into no man's oh. land, 78 minutes gone on the clock, you're up by seven, seven points, points. Yeah. Uh, it's on halfway, yeah, I, I, I hear what people are saying, they didn't want to give away a penalty, uh, this guy was pinging every, more than every ruck and England get a penalty, kick it down into the 22 and, you know, dial up one of their rollover tries from a, a rolling mall, okay, but if he's going to kick, why didn't he kick it deep? Oh, exactly what so Wayne Smith they're saying to the English yeah. You've got a hundred yards, hundred meters. You've got to run some way or another to win this match. He gives him a, a little kick in the middle of between twenty-two and halfway. He runs into open territory, not a black jersey in sight. Thirty seconds later, they yeah. score. See, and look, it's and the mental decisions against, they're making. It was against Scotland. He came on and he and he and for twenty minutes played really well and actually sort of secured that game. And when he came on, I was expecting a guy like that with all that experience to shut the game down. Yeah. And you're exactly right. People probably don't remember this. In that 99 semi-final when we lost to France, we were up something like 24-10, Brendan. Well, I've got we, it here now. We were, we were up 26-13, so there's a certain similarity. The score was quite similar. It was 25-6 the other yeah. day against England. It was 26-13, but the uh, All Blacks switched off earlier in the second half, and from about the 57th minute to the 70th minute, uh, it was... France had scored 26 yeah, points. Yeah, they did, unanswered. And uh, the final score was 43-31. Um, Look, Australia, I think that, that, you know, when you mentioned that Melbourne, when we were up 18 points against Aussie and conceded 23. Look, the Scotland and, and, the, and the Japan games, I'll put to, to the side because that wasn't the absolute A team for the All Blacks. But that was in Melbourne, Brendan. Yeah, so yeah, the yeah. same group of players with Sam yeah. Whitelock out there leading... What switched off? Well, he, he should never captain the All Blacks again, I'm sorry. With all due respect to Sam Whitelock. Great player that he's been for the All Blacks. Fantastic line-out jumper, fantastic player around the field. But where was he in those last well, exactly, nine yeah, minutes? Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, well, we're it, it raises an players. interesting question, doesn't it? Uh, would, they, would they have played out a different nine minutes of rugby if Sam Kane had been on the field? Well, would they have been in that position if Sam Kane had been on the field? Well, yeah, exactly. I mean, but, so what do you do uh, okay, with Doldrum? Okay. I mean, these, obviously the, uh, there's many selection issues May, now. Maybe they play um, Kane at number six next year and keep... Well, I think that they got seven. Scott Barrett. See, Scott Barrett, who isn't a natural six, who's meant to be a lock, but he's obviously the best option at six because when mm. it comes to these crunch matches, they always want him at six, don't mm. they? Mm. But you're right. I mean, it's... It's unfathomable and, with and an All Blacks side with that experience. And, and the other mental mistake they made, a huge one, I forget which try it was, but it was one of the tries that England scored and they were sort of getting a sniff and they were back in the game. And so back at halfway, when they restarted, the All Blacks, uh, again, this is how cute they got. Um, they felt, oh, no, 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 we'll have a short drop, drop out and win the ball. Yes, and, yes, yes. and so they didn't win it. England get it. And now uh, down and, our end. And now the next minute they're down the other end. So those two simple errors, mental errors made by a team, and that's what happens. I mean, we all know this. It doesn't matter where it is, whether it's in sport or in other areas of our life. When we sense uh, that things aren't going well, that's the time we're inclined to make bad decisions yeah, and panic. That's it. And it's no different on a sports field. Yeah. Now, 
what I was going to say, getting to the wonderful, on Sunday, on Monday morning, there was Lydia Ko, and not a dissimilar situation to that of the All Blacks the day before. She had dominated that tournament, like the All Blacks dominated the first 70 minutes of England. Um, she had a comfortable lead. It had narrowed a bit on the third day because an Irish woman, Maguire, came out of nowhere and shot 63, and that can happen. But it was a really tough day, the fourth day, windy and, and rain and God knows what. But every shot you saw of Lydia Ko, you just knew her mind was calm, it was rational, she knew exactly what she was doing, and she showed patience. She made a bad mistake on the first hole, and afterwards she said, oh, well, you know, I had 17 holes to kind of compensate for it. And then when the opportunity arose, with only three holes left, she struck. A par three, short par three, pretty simple hole, pin was close to the front of the green, uh, and she put the ball seven or eight feet from the hole and made the putt. Suddenly she's got a two-shot lead. But you could just tell her mind never, never wavered for that hole. It, she was in control. Well, it's, okay, so there are a couple of things with this. And Mex we had on yesterday, we also had Wayne Smith. Mex is, Mex is always talking about mental strength, right? Yeah. And whether or not Gilbert and Oak is still with that side or who is that guy that's actually providing that. The other was Wayne Smith saying, and I wrote this down yesterday, he hates box kicks. Oh, he has, so he do just, I. He just so says it's it's, almost like rolling more. Well, like, what, yeah. what he said is he said it's like sending up a grenade yeah. and hoping something good exactly, happens. Exactly, yeah. He said either kick to your guy yeah. like these lead kicks, which I'm loving yeah. going to yeah. win, yeah. or he said yeah. kick to where the seagulls are. Yeah. Kick to where the space is. No one, yeah. There, where there's no one, which but, is a really interesting philosophy, and I have never heard any other All Black coach say that. But that's one of the things I like about women's rugby is they don't box kick much. Uh, occasionally they do, and probably the more competitive the game gets, the more we see box kicking in the women's game. But it's it's a uh, it's a gift wrap. It's, you're gift wrapping the ball to the opposition, basically, yeah. which is what. Or you're Sarah hoping that yeah, or, or that it gets knocked back or not. And plus, also it's the luck. way yeah, the way yeah. that the game is policed at the moment, to me, it's so dangerous. Your guy can get yellow mm. carded. Uh, the the other, the, look, having having said all that, I've kind of reconciled it with myself saying that those last eight minutes, I'm glad they happened to the All Blacks because if we had a pinked England by, you know, 20 points or 15 points or something, we all just sat here and thought all is well yeah, again. Yeah, We've actually, maybe. You know, whereas in actual fact, that reminded us, hang on a second, we lost to Ireland. They absolutely moosed us in those last two tests. We were really lucky in Melbourne. We were smacked up in Nelspert. We lost to the RGs at home. We're not the world's greatest no, team. We're no. in the pack. But, but this World Cup, and you must actually say also agree... Any number of four or five teams can win this, and that's the only yep. time I've ever thought about a Rugby World Cup like that. I just hope Fossey, Fossey, because we've been, I think, pretty fair to him uh, over the months, um, and I've had to part company a wee bit with him over what happened on the weekend, because even 48 hours later, I still felt that it was a loss, the All Blacks. It was a loss, mate. It wasn't it's a draw, it was no, a loss. No, we lost that game. And so he's got the summer... The peace and quiet, I think he's down there at Waihee Beach where all these ex-All Black coaches and players go to. John Kerwin's got a house down there as well. Gatlin's got a house down Wayne there as Smith well. Wayne Smith lives down yeah, there. Wayne Smith's down there. Um, I just hope that um, he thinks about a mental strategy which he has to instil in his players to close out a game. Well, who's the captain then if it's not Sam? Well, look, Sam Kane's injured. Who's the, who, well, who becomes captain? Well, I mean, I, I would have gone for Savia, but I'm hearing also or reading somewhere in the paper this week that it was Savia that uh, told Perinara to put the box kick up in the 78th minute. So that doesn't indicate to me that he's got any great foresight or, or mental depth when he's under yeah, pressure. Yeah, I don't want to burden him with the captaincy. I just want him playing like yeah. a rampaging, bullocking beast. Well, therefore, you keep Kane. Well, does he make it back in now that Papa Lee is playing as well? Well, I, I think you look at him at six. And Papa Lee at six? No, 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 no. Sam it, Kane at Sam six. six. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he doesn't have the those physical qualities or speed, speed, the leg speed, that Papa Lee he has for a seven. Uh, the old-fashioned seven, even probably as recently as the days of Richie McCaw. Can you see, a, can you see an all-black team that goes to the World Cup next year without Sam, Sam Kane as a starter? See, Shannon uh, Frizzell, I thought, was coming on I as a number. I don't think so. I, I think if Foster wasn't the the coach and head of the show, uh, there's a chance, but I think he's too closely aligned to Kane and Kane to him. They go back a long time and uh, and they've got a good relationship. And I think in fairness to Kane, some of the rugby that he was playing this year, he was a lot more involved in games. He was a lot closer to the ball for longer periods and uh, he does have the team. He has the backing mm -hmm. of his team. Well, Foster so, selected him way before yeah. the season actually started. All right, just on a, one more rugby thing then. Razor, so he's in England, and he's to me he's buttering the bread on both sides here. I don't think Scott Ra Scott Robertson is going to be the England coach. I think that what he's doing is he's already organised with New Zealand Rugby that he'll take over for me and Foster after the yeah, World yeah, Cup, yeah. and yeah. that he's just letting New Zealand Rugby know 
that if you Just don't stringing them out, of if it, you yeah. if you don't pay me what I want and don't give me the four no. years I want, don't give me the people yeah. I want, I have got this job yeah. over here. Yeah, he is. He's, he's stringing them out of it, and I guess given the way he's been treated, that I, you can understand that. It's a bit like what's happening with Guptil, I suppose. I mean, I think what what's behind part of the reason for Guptil asking for his contract to be uh, made null and void is he's. He wants to snub New Zealand cricket a little bit. He has sat all through that Cricket World Cup and never got a bat. Yeah, true. He sat through the three matches against uh, India here and never got a bat. And with all due respect to Finn Allen, he's been a flop since that after that first match against Australia. He has made his career on the basis of 16 uh, unbelievable balls he faced at the top of that innings against Australia. He hasn't fired since. And he hasn't fired since. Yeah. And Gupta was thinking... Hold on, hold on. And I'm, people are saying to me now, you know, hey, come on, and I see there's a letter in the paper this morning, there's a very simple solution at the top of the order, bring back Guptil. Right. Well, <laughs> you know, and look, Marty Guptil is our, is our leading white ball run scorer in yeah. T- T20 cricket and that. There's also, I'm hearing, that, that team is not a together team. Since Ross Taylor left, and Ross Taylor yeah, was his best yeah. mate. Yeah, the glue. He was the glue, maybe. Well, I just, I just, there, are, there's factions in that team. And Williamson is in a, is in a well, strange zone, well, isn't where, he? Look, I mean, so he misses last night's game. What was for, it? For, why, why did he miss it? It was called a prearranged medical appointment. Oh, that's right. Yeah, Can't yeah. you rearrange the prearranged? Yeah, you've oh, arranged yeah. the medical yeah. appointment for yeah. a, a night yeah. you're working, mate. Mm. I mean, so look, I'd, mm. again, look, we and, asked, we asked it, the high performance manager of New Zealand cricket about this. So I said because. You can only speculate. When you hear that, you either worry about the guy and go, heck, what the heck's going on? Or you think, Kane, so, you're picking and choosing too many games you don't want to play, mate. Yeah, I mean, it's just sad because he's always been so solid. So the two questions I'd have for Gary Stead, what are you going to do about Finn Allen and what are you going to do about Jimmy Neesham? Neesham doesn't bowl anymore because he's... Oh, he's off anyway. He's, he, he's, he's, he's actually gone, not on contract. Yes, yeah. he's, he's playing and overseas. He well. doesn't score any runs and he doesn't bowl any Ooh, The problem is Gary Stead has no say in any of this. I think Gary Stead is like Dennis Aberhart. He's a lovely bloke, but... Who's, Williamson's calling the shots. Williamson calls all the shots. He calls all the shots, selection shots, everything. And I, and I, I, I just have this feeling inside of me that the guy is checking out or has checked out that he's got a T20 contracts in front of him like Trent Bolt has. And, you know, that New Zealand cricket couldn't afford to let him and Bolt go at exactly the same time. He's biding his time. That's what it feels yeah, like. Yeah, no, I, 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 I wouldn't entirely agree with you on Stead. I think he does have some say. I think he. Do, I don't think he's quite as uh, tame as Aberhart might have been all those years ago. I love Dennis, uh, but for, for, for sure, Williamson has a big say. And um, I remember Stephen Fleming once telling me, probably off the air actually, um, that he never ever went into the field, never went into an international cricket match as captain of the Black Claps with players he didn't want. No, of course always, not. You're the captain. It's the most all, unusual position in sport. It's like you like the Ryder Cup the, captain. Yeah. You pick your team, don't uh, you? Well, he wasn't a selector. He might have had a say in the selections, but he said, I never went onto the field uh, with players that I didn't yeah. want. Um, and so I think Williamson is probably in a similar kind of vein. Um, you know, he gets what he wants. But I think Stead... Stead has some say, and um, uh, it's interesting. And what do you do with Finell, and how long do you persevere with this well, guy? Well, he is the future. I mean, there's no is question. He? I think he he has to be the future, but he's also got to be to be reined in so that he gets some consistency in his scoring. Well, and the series it, like this should be where he's actually hitting really good runs. Well, listening again to Stephen Fleming last night or yesterday, uh, that he sees some flaws in, in Allen's batting. He's not showing enough patience at the top of the innings. He's, as Fleming said, even in a T20 match, doesn't matter if you take an over and an over half to have a look at the bowler and the pitch. Uh, you don't have to score a lot of runs in your first over. No. But he said someone needs to get to him to kind of explain to him, which is fairly basic stuff, I would have thought. Just You've got plenty of time, yeah. Finn. Mm. You know? but, awful um, FIFA was the other one, Brendan. FIFA, Why is FIFA yeah. so awful? This World Cup's fantastic, mate. Well, I go back... The stadiums are beautiful. <laughs> the people are happy. They're celebrating. I go back to that famous comment of the late... Justice Mann. Remember him? Yeah, uh, an he, orchestrated litany what, of lies. And what we're seeing coming out of yeah. coming out of uh, Qatar is an orchestrated orchestrated litany of lies, catastrophes, uh, PR nightmare, and gutlessness and spinelessness from the FIFA uh, organization of International Football Federation. Um, there's a very clear lesson here for FIFA. And they should have learnt this 20 or 30 years ago. They're going down exactly the same road that the IOC went down in the 1980s where they gave the Olympic Games to tin pop dictatorships, uh, wealthy military regimes, and it all backfired. If you remember, they gave the 1980 Games to the Soviet Union, communist dictatorship, uh, dictatorship where you know the treatment of human rights was just ignored. And they just invaded um, Afghanistan. And then, and then exactly so half the world said, no, we're not going 
to Moscow, and then four years later, half the world of Eastern Europe didn't go to the LA Games. So then they turn around and they give the Olympic Games in 1988 to a military dictatorship in South Korea. And in the weeks beforehand, there were these horrible scenes across the television screens around the world of the riot police in Seoul shooting, bashing and firing rubber bullets and tear gas into the faces of demonstrators. And as soon as the Olympic Games finished, that military regime basically collapsed. But again, it was a PR nightmare for the IOC. Did FIFA care, though, and, Brendan? But, but, Do they really care? Well, I think they will this time. I mean, it's more than just kind of, you know, a few people complaining. There is widespread... A disillusionment with FIFA as an organisation and this comic clown who's oh, running infantino. I am gay. I am gay. I, I am disabled. I, I, I am an immigrant. Well, there, there, there was, there, I mean, honestly, I was, I was saying he's back the next night, order the veal. Yeah. I mean, you can't get a better comedy was, show than that, I can think you? he was trying to do a Billy Conley, wasn't he? Yeah. A stand-up piece. But, I mean, um, this is... Uh, this is crazy what's going on over there, isn't well, it? Well, it's even crazy when Sepp Blatter, you know, comes out a couple of weeks ago yeah, and says that Seth, the tournament yeah. should never have been awarded there yeah. when he was the guy in charge. Look, we know, the IOC, have they completely cleaned up their corruption? Have no, they probably haven't, but they've gone a long way towards it. And the one thing they have done is that since 1988, they only give the hosting rights to safe countries, Australia. Well, you, Brazil, you could hardly say Brazil was safe, but they've been absolutely well, bankrupted it, yeah, by the Olympic Yeah, it game. was, but it, it wasn't as fundamentally as evil as China, Russia. China, they gave it to uh, Beijing. Yeah, well, you could argue that... Yeah, there's some it, human rights but, questions but, exist in their country. But again, the, the money, that's right. Yeah. But by and large, they've, they've got away from being seduced by massive amounts of money, which they happened in the 1980s through from these places like, as you say, China, although China was a bit later... But um, this is, FIFA can't afford to go to these tin pot places. I mean, Qatar has got no well, who's history. Telli- who's telling them off, though, Brendan? I mean, I mean, apart from us sitting here well, talking about it on the radio, the, I mean, in, internally it will. It hasn't it, stopped it, the sponsors. It'll, it'll, I mean, they're still on board. Yeah, people I, around the world are still watching it. in their billions. They are, but it's doing an enormous amount of damage to the image of football when you see this sort of stuff going on there. When players, you know, like Gareth Bale and these captains of these European teams are being told by FIFA they can't have some innocent little kind of yeah, no, this banner is, on their yeah. arm is bizarre. But they are so beholden to the Qataris that they're prepared to do that. Well, they're so beholden that a day before the tournament they turned around and said no beer at the yeah. stadiums. Now, I mean, come on. Well, actually, I, I agree with that, actually. I'm, I'm on all f- Why do you have to drink alcohol? Because, with- mate, why, you why? can't watch sport without being pissed, mate. Come on. <laughs> no, I You're know. just way I too can, old now. I, I, I can tell you, I, I've never touched alcohol when I'm watching. I, I, I don't, I don't want to be distracted by alcohol when I'm watching sport. How can you watch sport without being drunk, <laughs> mate? How do you with your wedding? You can't get a yell on. Sorry, you need to spend more time Sorry. with Miles is what Sorry. you need to spend more time with him watching sport, mate. Well, maybe I'd better go and live in Qatar then. But, uh, <laughs>